Hello and welcome. My name is Dan Meyer. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of RCR Wireless News. Thanks for joining us today. Today uh, we are joined by Robert Fox, who is the Global Industry Leader for Telecommunications, Media, and Entertainment at IBM. Uh, Robert, thanks for joining us today. We, we appreciate it. Hey, Dan. It's great to be with you. Great. Well, maybe we'll start off with, um, I guess, obviously you guys had a, some pretty big news uh, recently, a uh, nice deal with Apple. Uh, perhaps you can, I guess, give us a little recap on that announcement and I guess the importance of that, uh, that announcement for, for IBM. Well, I think it's, uh, as, as Ginny and Tim said last week live uh, to us, you know, it is, a, it is a landmark agreement, I think, for both firms. Um, I think both of them said, hey, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to combine the best of two, you know, great companies. Um, I think we've all had the experience of Apple products, Apple design, Apple integration, Apple care, et cetera, in the consumer world. Mm -hmm. and you know, it's really made a pretty big difference to to a lot of us, um, and I think they have great aspirations to do the same thing in the enterprise world. Um, you know, Tim said at the at the announcement, "Hey, look, you know, we, we already have a big enterprise business, 90% of the Fortune 500, 90% of the Global 500, but we really haven't had the penetration into those accounts." And Ginny cited a statistic. Uh, since she's the boss, I'll assume that it's true. <laughs> that about 70% of the use of mobile devices in the enterprise is today only email and calendaring. And so the penetration in terms of mission critical applications really enabling um, enterprises isn't there. And I think Apple recognized that. Now, for IBM, I think the, the flip side is also true, that we, we have a great enterprise business. Uh, I think we understand enterprises and, and industry verticals. Um, from an integration point of view, from the care abouts of CIOs, security, uh, policy, management of those devices, etc. But we haven't yet found a way to have that in the simple form that, that, that Apple is famous for. So I think we, th we think that, the, the, you know, Ginny and, and Tim both said, and I agree with this, is that we're trying to grow revenue for both firms. And they're trying to sell more devices and get more people on the iOS platform. We're trying to have deeper penetration into enterprises. I think the key thing, the key new thing for both of us, and both of them said it in slightly different ways, is that we really want to create a new class of applications in enterprises that, that, that haven't been done yet. Sure, there's, you know, we walk around uh, lots of enterprises and you see lots of mobile devices, uh, uh, tablets and phones, mm -hmm. but are they really changing the way employees do business? Are they changing the way employees interact with customers? And I think both of us would conclude, no, not yet. So is there an opportunity for us to create great applications and great um, systems of engagement with uh, enterprise customers to, to do something quite different? So we're not trying to really replicate what's out there with uh, mobile apps for enterprises. So it seems like it's a good way, I guess, then to kind of almost, um, I guess, clarify or perhaps clean up a bit kind of the, the, the wild west that has become uh, the enterprise when it comes to mobile devices. Because, you know, the whole bring your own device phenomenon has really seemed to have really changed how enterprises uh, interact, you know, with, with, their, with their information and their data. But the IT guys, you know, have had troubles, you know, getting a handle of what's happening out there because there are so many, uh, uh, you know, their employees just bringing their own devices into the market or into the, into the enterprise. Uh, this seems like perhaps a way then to kind of, I guess maybe clarify that a bit for, for the enterprises? Yeah, I think that's right, Dan. I think, you, you know, when you, when you ask CIOs what's the number one concern they have about the BYOD phenomenon, which, by the way, they can't stop. Yeah. People, people, people you know, when we had BlackBerry environments, when, when the iPhone came out, people just said, I'm bringing my iPhone, and it was the senior executives as, many, as much as anything else. When the iPad came out, the same thing happened. New Android devices, et cetera, et cetera. So it's not a phenomenon they can stop. But what their the number one concern is around security, mm -hmm. making sure that that these devices are secure, that the information is behind firewalls properly, et cetera, et cetera. And so I think there's a big opportunity here to take advantage of what we do really well with enterprise grade applications, with security, with policy, with management of devices. And IBM is a very large business in the management of end user devices. Now we can extend that into the iOS. Um, sphere, and you know, hopefully, um, 
give confidence to CIOs and line of business heads that we can develop these applications um, and you can have the best of both worlds. You can have a great platform to build on, a great set of applications, and you're protecting the IT estate of these large companies. Gotcha, gotcha. Now I guess you know we, we kind of focus a lot here on, on the wireless side of things, and obviously uh, Apple has been a very big disruptor in the wireless space for, for several years, and IBM obviously has been playing in this space as well. Uh, I guess how important is this, is this announcement, uh, maybe more specifically for the mobile market? I mean, obviously for the enterprises, it's a big, it's a big, you know, impact on it. Are you guys expected to kind of expand, perhaps beyond what was announced in the initial uh, uh, deal? I mean, how, how do you guys see this playing out, maybe longer term, for for the mobile space? Well, I think I think our our first the first key thing is for us to be in the market in the fall with, you know, the applications that we talked about, you know, as many as over a hundred over or, over a period of time, mm -hmm. to have the right software platform built. That, that enables that to do that, have the developer environment to be able to do that, and then the management of, the, of those devices um, and procurement of them and the management of all the procurement. So have all four of those components in the marketplace. Um, I think we think, and, and we, we had a little bit of a preview of some of the things we're thinking about in, in various industries. There were, and Ginny and Tim talked about one um, in, in one of the interviews that they did in, in the uh, in the airline industry, and we think in every one of the priority industries we've identified, there are five to ten to fifteen you know applications that we could think about. We'll come come back and talk about that in the telecom space in, in a bit. Mm -hmm. so I, think, I think that's really the opportunity. Where where that then goes from here. Um, I, I think there's a lot of opportunities to take this to very large enterprises, small and medium enterprises. Um, eventually, while uh, Apple is not a big player in the Internet of Things or, or M2M, the dashboards, the control of what will be hundreds of billions of devices, hundreds of billions of devices, I should say, is, is still fertile territory. And so I think we could, take, we could take this a long way, but we have to get off to a good start. Yeah, yeah, and obviously, and again, it was a big announcement because you know, again, IBM is itself a, a pretty large company. Whenever IBM makes an announcement, usually it's pretty well followed. And obviously, Apple is as well. So these two companies coming together, uh, I guess, was there any concern for any sort of a uh, uh, you know um, issue with two companies kind of working together? Because in the past, you know, there are, there, there does seem to have been you know issues in other industries when it comes to two big companies working together. Sometimes, uh, perhaps the, the the size of the two companies makes it difficult to work together at times. Is this you think a pretty a pretty smooth transition between the two operators to the two companies? Well, I think in the in the work leading up to the announcement, and, and as Ginny and Tim talked about, this has been in the works for several months. Mm -hmm. There's been a lot of work done with you know with the developers, um, with uh, the engineers, with the consultants on both sides, looking at the opportunity. And I think I think probably both companies were a little bit surprised at that, that how how well they really got along. And I think there's great respect on the part of each company for what that company does well. I, I, I know when we've talked with our Apple counterparts about the things we're thinking about in telecom, the integration capabilities we have with all the back-end systems, our ability to take you know enormous amounts of data and to be able to use that for analytics purposes, for predictive purposes, et cetera, is something that they realize they don't do well. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, when we look at their design principles, when we look at their user interface, when they look at their we look at their human factors, they've made enormous contributions to the usability, look and feel, and you, you almost kind of say to yourself, "Wow, wh why didn't I think of that? How, <laughs> how simple that could be." So I think there's great respect on both sides, and I think there's good complementarity in the skills that each brings. Okay, makes sense. Now, obviously, you know, again, like you mentioned, IBM has been in the telecom space for a long time. Uh, I, I guess, you know, how important uh, will this be for, I guess, furthering IBM's uh, play in the telecom space? And, and I guess, what's kind of IBM's view of how telecom slash mobile uh, is evolving? How IBM will kind of play in that in that in that in that, that atmosphere? I guess. Yeah, and that's a that's a core industry in in the in the industries we're looking at with with Apple. You know, telecom as an industry is a key industry. Now, obviously, you know, there's there's almost three layers that you need to talk about here. The one we're not going to talk about is sort of the the uh, CSPs as service providers, right? 
we generally in, in your publication talks a lot about the you know three and a half billion subscribers and the petabytes of data and the video explosion all that kind of stuff that's happening I'm mm -hmm. not going to talk about that We're, we want really want to focus on um, the communications service providers one as a, a very important channel to market for Apple you know Apple has more than more than 300 you know carriers uh, as, as a channel to market we need to make sure that that continues uh, well and then secondly let's think about CSPs as an enterprise for a moment so uh, in, in particular let's think about you know where where are the needs for mobile in the in the in the M, in the telcos as an enterprise mm -hmm. so let's take one company Telefonica 130,000 people spread across 24 countries so if you're thinking about distance learning, if you're thinking about HR practices and policies of people distributed all around the world, that's an enormous opportunity for us to think about how can mobile enable people who don't sit in office buildings, who aren't um, in one location in front of a desktop or, or what have you, to do sorts of things. Then let's think about some of the very large specialized practices in these telcos. Um, you take a company like uh, you know AT&T or, or Verizon with uh, a small number of thousands of, of company-owned stores and then more than 10,000 uh, independent stores all with employees and think about the experience of creating uh, whole new applications for store employees to do work better to have a more significant uh, experience with the customer to understand all of the history that Dan or Bob or whoever has had with the company with the call center and various channels or whatever which we which they don't have today mm -hmm. think about the mobile field force uh, Fios with six billion um, homes each of which has a device attached to the outside of the house and then all kinds of set-top boxes and gear inside the house that all has to be maintained it has to be installed it has to be repaired it has to be upgraded could we give that field force a much better experience knowledge base connection to inventory to routing to optimization etc and then you take the just the infrastructure of large carriers whether that's a wireline carrier or a wireless carrier 300,000 macro cell sites in the United States alone again that need to be you know built maintained upgraded and, and high visibility and if you look at the costs of some of just the cost side let's we'll come back to the customer experience side in a minute average truck roll in the United States to go out and fix something in your house or my house or or our business is roughly four hundred dollars so if I go out there and I can't fix it the first time I don't have the right equipment I don't have the right tools I don't have the right skills I've turned a four hundred dollar cost problem into an eight hundred dollar cost problem or a twelve hundred dollar cost problem mm -hmm. so there's a lot of cost to be taken out and you as a subscriber when that guy or gal comes out and tries to fix it and fails in the first time that's not a good customer experience for you. and roughly 70% of the, um, the the enterprise customers uh, polled in the United States say their experience with the carriers as service providers in the servicing of them is not good so can we you know dramatically lower the costs of those kinds of field forces they're mobile, they're nomadic, they're dispersed, um, and can we then improve the customer service? So those are the kinds of areas and the populations of employees that we're going to be targeting with this first round of applications in the telco area. It's very exciting. Yeah, well, I mean, not to, you know, not to downplay what you guys are trying, but I mean, this is obviously what you're going after is a huge, uh, I mean, these issues you brought up are, are huge issues that have been plaguing uh, telecom for years. And uh, it seems like there are those those issues that uh, people have tried to tackle, who constantly talk about trying to tackle, and yet those issues, if anything, have just gotten worse and worse because again, this explosion uh, in, in consumer usage of this uh, of, of data, and mobile, whether it's mobile or wired, uh, just doesn't seem to be letting up. And so, obviously, this is a, a big challenge for you guys, and to kind of uh, you know try to tackle these 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 issues out there in space. Well, you, you, it's interesting you say that. So, you know, in talking to my own team about. The challenges, you know, they'll talk about the difficulty of getting the back-end integration right, the difficulty of bringing the analytics forward to help, you know, with routing or with material uh, availability, etc. And I'll say to them, yeah, it, it, it's difficult because that's what's valuable. Mm -hmm. That's what's valuable. And in, in then when you think about the whole experience part of it, 
having a, a tablet that the technician can use to do his or her job and then turning to the customer and saying, hey, by the way, Dan, I, I noticed that you have the XYZ package for Uverse or Fios or, whatever, or Comcast or whatever you have. Just looking at your own patterns and the usage in your home, perhaps this would be a better one. Have a very easy way to hand you the pad and say, take a look at how you could reconfigure your service real time based on the data and your own usage patterns. You could really begin to see, you could really envision a very different future for the technician who's, who's going to have a higher level of job satisfaction, the customer who's going to get the thing fixed right, and maybe we'll even be put on a better plan that more meets his or her needs or the, or the household needs. So it's a big undertaking. There's no question about that. I think that's why you put two big companies together to solve big gnarly problems. And, um, and, and that, that's what's exciting, I think, in the last week since the announcement, what's exciting to our teams. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I think even just from the outside, kind of looking in on this, I mean, it does seem like again there are two big companies. So obviously the resources are there, the manpower is there, uh, uh, the brain power is there for this to happen. Uh, but again, the, these are definitely like you mentioned, you know, these are topics that are, have been plaguing the industry for a while. And so you know, having those two companies to tackle it seemed like a, uh, I guess if it's going to happen, this would be a good, a good, a good way for it to happen. And having the two companies come together, so uh, it seems like a, a good way to tackle that. Um, but it seems like too that you know software is obviously becoming an important part of this too. I mean, obviously. You know, your platforms, a lot of analytics, uh, I mean, that's a huge part of, of the telecom space. Uh, how important has, I guess, the, the, the growth, but also the, uh, I guess, the more um, uh, ability for carriers to accept software as, as, a, as an important part of, of their operations? I mean, it seems like in the past, telecom companies were very hardware-based, you know, just throwing, throwing a base station or a new server somewhere, things that they could see and feel, uh, where it seems like now, Software is becoming a much more important part of it. It does seem like the industry is perhaps turning a bit to allowing, uh, to kind of, I guess, trusting software more to handle some of these, these situations. Yeah, I think, um, it, you know, uh, I don't need to take you through the IBM recent history of software acquisitions and, and, the, and the move much more towards software. I think what we, what we see is that the, the, the big service providers want solutions, and those solutions include software, they include hardware, they may include services to, to solve you know, really difficult problems. I think the big areas that we see the, you know, the, the software playing a key role, you mentioned analytics. You know, our, our analytics portfolio is in dozens and dozens of the largest CSPs that are helping them think about the, you know, the real customer experience. And in our mind, the real customer experience is what you and I are experiencing right now on this video call. What's the quality of the video call? Are we going to drop this call? Same with our mobile calls. If we're gamers, what's the jitter? What's the latency, et cetera? And all of those things, someone could be monitoring, whoever your service provider is and my service provider, this link right now, and know exactly what the performance characteristics are. What you and I are experiencing as part of customer experience, that's all about software. And then be able to predict you know, given traffic patterns, given different equipment, et cetera, what's the likelihood that we're going to run into issues, et cetera, and then if something does happen, what does the CSP do about it? And again, that's all kind of triggered off of software, doing analytics, doing predictive, um, running predictive algorithms, um, running uh, statistical models of how those work, and then t doing things like next, next best action. So if we, you and I do have a problem here, do we get something back from our carrier that says, gee, Dan, we're sorry that that happened. Here's something we can do for you. Or simply that they can identify that for optimizing you know, network equipment. So I think what they have seen in the last, let's say, three to five years is an explosion in the capability of software to handle huge numbers of subscribers, huge volumes of data in near real time, near real time. And so now they're beginning to think about how do we take that from the back office and in the network into the front office, combine that with uh, information about market segmentation, about other kinds of usage patterns, and connect those together. So we still see a very bright future in the, in the, in the software you know, part of the, of the telco business. You know, the next big waves are going to be in wanting those solutions as a service, not mm -hmm. necessarily buying them in license models. Uh, we're going to see a lot of those kinds of business models creep into the network with 
network function virtualization and so forth and so on. And so I think a lot of our history and heritage of, see, of seeing those patterns in the big data centers now are going to move into the, to the network organizations. And the, what's really fun to watch, in my opinion, is the connection of the CIOs back to the business people, the chief marketing officer, the head of consumer, the head of business, where they can go problem solve together, looking at the data across the enterprise and not just in these silos. Yeah, yeah. Well, it definitely seems like the CIOs are getting a lot more respect nowadays than perhaps they, they used to back in the past. It does seem like they're becoming a very central uh, figure to a lot of these operations for, for telecom carriers, so that's a, a big thing for them. And I was going to touch, I guess, ask you a bit about that virtualization aspect. You, you kind of brought up you know, kind of touch a bit on cloud, but also NFV and SDN and different things like that. Uh, it doesn't seem like, from, from IBM's point of view, that this virtualization is perhaps even the next, is that kind of the next step that we're looking at, you know, where, where software now is not just something that a company uh, deploys onto their actual servers, physical servers, but now it's going to be something that will be hosted somewhere else uh, by, you know, by an IBM or somebody else. Is that kind of the next, the next you think, a wave uh, for, for, uh, for when it comes to software deployments? It's a very big wave. Whether whether we'll take over all of the network functions, you know that that's that's left to be to be seen. Mm -hmm. When you think about you know certain kinds of, of functions, um, you know many of the service providers have been very public about you know issuing large you know scale RFIs or RF, RFQs about you know to the to the large vendors about can 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 you, can these be virtualized? How can they be virtualized? And how can they be done at the, the levels of service, five nines reliability, et cetera, that's part of the, of the telco environment. So there's still a lot of work to be done, but I think there's no question when you look at the largest carriers around the world who have gone out and said, we, we need a more flexible environment built more on general purpose computing, built more on, on um, composable services, built more on off-the-shelf software and hardware. Um, and some very powerful people within those organizations really pushing hard on that. I think it's um, uh, it's inevitable. Yeah, yeah. Well, obviously, again, you know, with the announcement between you guys and, and Apple, uh, it definitely shook a lot of uh, trees, I think, in the in the telecom space and in, in the wireless space specifically. So I know a lot of companies uh, perhaps a little more nervous this week than we were last week uh, when it comes to their kind of their future in the enterprise space. So uh, again, uh, a big a big announcement from you guys. So I think uh, it'll be fun to kind of watch how this all plays out. Over the next months and years, I'm sure, again, as, as, as you two kind of work together closer and closer on this, it should be fun to watch. Yeah, we'd love to continue the dialogue about it. I mean, this, this is just the start of the announcement. We've got a launch in the fall. We've got to continue to, to build on the, the vision that Tim and Ginny laid out for us. Yeah, that sounds good. Well, hey, again, Robert, definitely appreciate the time and the insight today. Thanks so much for the information, and hopefully, again, we can talk soon on this, on this topic. You're very welcome. Happy to join you today. Thanks.